foot to press the recording button. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite an achievement. So now I did. So, so I mean, those students have uh, assignments in universities or tasks or projects to complete, and they need to use specific software that they need to buy. So what do they do? If they cannot afford it, sometimes they use pirated software. So they become pirates. But that's illegal. That's an illegal thing. We don't want that. We don't want to convert students to pirates. We want to present them with free and open source software alternatives, not just free as in freedom, but also as in free beer. So we need to keep both of these perspectives in mind. So, uh, another thing is that students are tied to closed source software. Once they start using it, they're tied to that. They keep using it for years. They buy the next version of the software and they just keep buying it over the time. So, uh, there are some cases where software companies, they, they offer uh, software to students for free as, let's say, university evaluations or education evaluations. I mean, they offer it for free, but they don't do that because they are philanthropists. They don't want to help people. They want to gain, I mean, they want to gain, to gain new, user, new users because these people, they will get the software for free when they are students, but once they grow up, they will have to buy it to be used in their work or in home. So what they're doing is, I mean, they try to gain new uh, users by providing free evaluations to students. Another thing, students related to ICT studies, such as computer science or software engineering or whatever, anything related to ICT, they don't have the chance to see how closed source software operates because they cannot access the source code. But, but with free and open source software, they can do that because they have access to the source code, they can view the code, they can become better developers, they can do, they can do, they can do that stuff. And last but not least, another point is that education is about sharing of knowledge for, for, for free to everyone. But closed source software is opposed to that, it's kind of opposed. And for that, I would like to quote Richard Stallman in one of his interviews. He said, that in, he said a small story. He said, imagine a classroom where there, there are lots of students inside it. In a, open source, in a free open source uh, ecosystem, there would be the student who would have those candies and he would, he would share those candies with his friends. But on the other hand, on a closed source ecosystem, that wouldn't be possible. There would be the teacher who would say, hey, Michael, you, you, bought, you brought those candies for yourself, you bought them, but you're the only person that needs to own those candies. You cannot share them with your friends. Sharing is piracy. You're being a pirate. You're being illegal. You cannot do that. So that was quite an interesting story that he said. So definitely, free and open source software deserves a huge place in education. Now, more specifically, regarding Fedora. So uh, I would like to talk a bit about the Edu Spin or the Edu Remix, whatever we end up producing or whatever we end up discussing. So what about that Remix or the Spin? Imagine that we could build a custom Fedora environment to be used in education. And that environment would, would include definitely apps for any use, for example, a web browser, an office productivity suite, a media player, all basic software that students need to use. But it will additionally include other apps related to education, for example, KDE2. I, I mean, most of you should have heard of it, right? No? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, the KDE2 project includes lots of educational related applications to be used by students in different stages of education. So, this software should be available to be adopted and used in all stages of education. So that's at least primary education, secondary education, and tertiary education. Tertiary is post-secondary. And every teacher and student should be able to customize it to their own needs. So we definitely need to provide instructions on how to do that. What are the benefits of that? What do students gain and what also we could gain by providing a custom federal environment like that? So. First of all, zero cost, okay? They don't need to buy it. That's a good thing for the students. Because they end up with good quality software that they can use for free to be productive in their school environments or at home. It's safe for them. I mean, it's an out of the box distro that requires minimal customization and can be used instantly. And 
they don't need to install uh, ad additional software for protection. For example, most of the students currently, I mean, they have to buy other kinds of software, such as security software, I mean, antivirus software, firewalls, stuff like that in Microsoft Windows. So they don't need to buy additional software by using Fedora or any Linux distro in general. And another thing is that they get rid, they, they will instantly get rid of all those crappy software that are bundled with OEM Microsoft Windows installs. So that's a good thing. It's stable because, as I said, okay, it's kind of stable. Uh, because, as I said, it's, it just works out of the box. They have to do minimal customizations and it can be portable. I mean, imagine uh, having a portable Fedora educational environment that any student can use in every occasion. For example, they can have a Fedora Live USB stick with their custom Fedora environment with all their apps and their data. And for example, when they visit the computer laboratory in their schools, they can just plug it in, they can use it. And when they go home, they can have the same Fedora environment with them everywhere they go. How cool is that? I mean, for students, that would be very, very handy. It's innovative because, as you may know, in Fedora, we are, we are always six months ahead of other distros. It's one of our uh, four foundations, it's features. We always make sure to include all the latest advancements in the Linux world. We're always ahead of others. So we, provi we provide them with innovative so software that they can use. Okay, Fully customizable, as I mentioned earlier, they should be able to customize it, to tailor it, to their own needs, so it does exactly the kind of computing they want, and it's backed by the community. So if they run into any problems and if they need support, we would be there to help them. Okay. But where are we now? Are we covering education? What are we doing to provide a specific federal environment for education? So basically, what we have now is SOAS, which is sugar on a stick. I guess. Okay, I see an XO lap up over there. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, but SOAS is mostly for preschool education. It's for young children, okay? Maybe until, I don't know, 11 years old, let's say, maximum. I mean, not, not more than that. And on the other side, we also have Fedora Scientific, provided by Fedora Labs. It used to be, a, it could be a spin, uh, but now it's called, uh, it's a spin, but it's part of Fedora Labs. So we have the scientific spin, but this is mostly for tertiary education. It's for university students. And more specifically, it's for scientists. It's for people that want to use science-related tools, OK? What we used to have is FEL, the Federal Electronic Lab, also another federal spin. But again, this was mostly for tertiary education. It was for university students. And it was for people that wanted to use open tools to design hardware, so even a more specific target group. So as you can see, there is a huge gap. I mean, currently, we just cover preschool education and tertiary education. So we need to make sure that we cover other stages of education as well. So what can we do about that? As I said, make sure that we should try to cover as many stages of education as possible. We need to help all kinds of students. We, we should not focus on specific target groups. We need to help everyone. We, we, need ev we want everyone to benefit from our actions and from our products, from our open products. So uh, an idea would be, as I mentioned, to produce a spin or a remix that can be used in all stages in, of education inside and outside the classroom. Okay? And even if we brainstorm and we agree not to do that, at least we should provide some simple and straightforward instructions for people that want to build their custom Fedora environments. Okay? Currently, I mean, there are a few wiki pages uh, describing how someone can create his own or her own uh, Fedora remix, but this is a bit technical. This is not very straightforward. I mean, someone has to be a technical person to do that. Not everyone can do that. So it would be a very good idea if we can at least provide some good instructions so that everyone can do that. Okay, and now to the hot topic for today. That's not working, so. Now for the hot topic of today about the Campus Ambassadors program. Uh, so, what about it? What was the Campus Ambassadors program? Because it was, it currently doesn't exist in practice. So, the Federal Campus Ambassadors program focused on 
spreading the word of Fedora in schools and universities in all places of the world, okay? And it was connected to the larger Fedora Ambassadors program. And if someone wanted to become a Fedora Campus Ambassador, she or she had to previously be become uh, a fully vetted Fedora Ambassador. So there, there was that condition. But the thing is that it never worked out. It's currently dead. And the, the whole initiative, it got stuck in its formal stages. I mean, there wasn't any final structure for it. There's just a few wiki pages about the program, but nothing was finalized. So it got stuck there and it never progressed. So I believe it's important to see more Fedora in schools. And I also believe that we need a specific set of ambassadors to do that. So what I would like to propose to you today is that we should consider bringing the Campus Ambassadors program back to life. And for that, I would like to propose a few changes to the structure. So, first of all, think of the word campus. What does it make you think of? Campus. The faculty, the school itself. The school or the university or college. So, the word campus, it makes you think of colleges and universities mostly, okay? So, the first thing I would like to propose that we should change is changing the name from campus ambassador to student ambassadors, okay? So, this is a much broader term, students. It's applicable in all stages of education. And we want to have ambassadors from different uh, stages of education. We shouldn't only focus on universities. We also have to include high schools, for example. So, another thing would be that the new program would be no longer connected to the larger ambassador for a project. It should be a different thing, a completely different thing. So, there, there, won't be, there shouldn't be a requirement that someone should be an existing Fedora ambassador in order to become a student ambassador, okay? Students are young people, we need to give them a break. I mean, they don't need to know everyone. They should possess some specific knowledge about the distribution and the community as a whole and the project, but they do not need to be experts. We just want to empower people that want to be the representatives of Fedora in their schools. So, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't propose very tough requirements for those students. They definitely need to possess some knowledge about us, about the distribution, because they will be their representatives, but they don't need to be experts. So how are we going to do that? Students, of course, will go through a mentoring process, will have mentors, to make sure that they meet specific criteria before becoming a student ambassador. Definitely. Okay? So the students will be accepted once the mentor feels that the student is ready to become a student ambassador. Okay? Mentees will be connected to their mentors at all times. This is not happening in the current ambassadors program. I mean, I've had so many years to speak to my mentor and I feel bad about that for, I mean, for something related to Fedora. So what happens in the current Fedora ambassadors program is that there isn't any direct mentor and mentor relationship. So we need those young student ambassadors to feel like they're connected to the project and that they always have a person to, to support them if needed. Okay, so there will, there will be a mentee tied to a mentor. That's how it's going to work uh, in a good way. Of course, the mentors would be able to provide their mentees with new contribution opportunities as they see fit. And those students can explore more contribution opportunities inside the project. And they can even become fully vetted ambassadors at some point once they're ready for it. Sure, we want to end up with, uh, we want student ambassadors to become fully vetted ambassadors. That's perfectly fine. We, we definitely want that. Another thing would be to bring back the Fedora Classroom. Do you guys remember the Fedora Classroom? A few people only. So the Fedora Classrooms were IRC sessions held by experienced community members, mostly experienced com community members, about different topics, about the distribution or the whole project. Okay? Uh, so new contributors could explore new opportunities inside the project and, and they could learn new things. The last time we had a Fedora classroom, I think was back in 2011. So no one else has been holding IRC Fedora classrooms since then. That's a quite bad thing. I mean, Fedora classrooms, I think they, they will work very well in, 
there's still a master's program if we decide to revive that. And another thing would be that maybe, maybe we should consider bringing back the Fedora Scholarship. Anyone knows the Fedora Scholarship, the program? Okay, so the Fedora Scholarship program awarded one high school senior each year for his or her uh, contributions towards the project, okay? And that was a good way to motivate students to do more stuff for Fedora and also to reward one person each year. So there was one recipient who received $2,000 every year for his university enrollment. And it's not up to me if we uh, should bring it back to life, bring this Federal Scholars back to, back to life. The sponsor was Red Hat, so it's up to Red Hat to do that. But I'm just, I'm just having an idea that we should reconsider that, okay? Uh, last, by the way, the last time there was a federal scholarship, it was back in 2012. Since then, it no longer exists. So, moving on. So, let's say that we have a new proposed structure. Uh, let's see what those student ambassadors could do. A few, a few possible activities that they could do at their schools. So, first of all, maybe the first thing that comes to mind is to give a talk or conduct a workshop about Fedora, either technical or non-technical. It will be depend on the student, on the skills that the student has, and it will also depend on the audience, okay? So that's the first thing that comes to mind. Another thing would be to invite someone else to speak, maybe a more experienced ambassador, or a more experienced Fedora contributor in general, okay? Host a Fedora install fest. They can organize install fests in their schools, in their campuses, and they can help other students to install Fedora on their machines. And they can answer questions, they can troubleshoot, if they have any problems, they can do these kinds of stuff. Another cool thing would be to maintain a Fedora-powered computer laboratory. So these students, these student ambassadors, could consult the, their professors or their teachers or the computer laboratory supervisors, depends on the school, and they can see if it would be possible to have Fedora-powered computer labs. I mean, that's very cool. I would love to see schools using Fedora on, on their machines. Another thing, if there is some good Fedora presence inside the campus or inside the school, they should, they could uh, consider organizing a, a meetup for the local community, okay? When a new version of Fedora comes right in, they could also have release parties in their schools. And last but not least, there is always the possibility to have a FAD, a Fedora Activity Day. But even if for some reasons they cannot hold a FAD, because having a FAD implies there needs to be some actual contribution towards the project, there need to be some metrics for the project, even if they cannot do a Fedora Activity Day, they can just have a day dedicated to Fedora with presentations and workshops, and they can call it a Fedora Day, let's say, or a Fedora Weekend, it's, if it's two days, okay? So these are a few possible activities. There is always room for more, just putting a few ideas there. Some of these ideas were also proposed for the Campus Ambassador program, okay? But, okay, so far we have a new proposed structure and we also have a few possible ideas that the student ambassadors can do. But how do we begin, okay? First of all, we should let the federal community know, okay? We need uh, to post on mailing lists and ask for feedback and for new ideas. And we definitely need to discuss a lot between us and brainstorm, put ideas on the table and finalize, come, come with a new structure for the program and finalize it, okay? And subsequently, we should update existing content on the wiki and create new one if needed. Then, the next step would be to invite existing Fedora pastors who are also students, for example, me, okay? Or experienced pastors in general, to join that program, either as student ambassadors or as mentors. We definitely need mentors to get going with this. We need people who can lead the project, the, the initiative, okay? And then it's obvious that we need to start planning activities in schools and try to, uh, try to recruit students as student ambassadors, okay? Now a few words about the university initiative, okay? 
although I'm not the expert for this. Uh, so what about it? It's called the University Involvement Initiative. And if you, have, uh, if you read the, the Fedora magazine frequently, you would have noticed that. It's one of the current 12 to 18th month uh, community objectives. And this proposal was approved by the Fedora Council. And the, the description says that it aims to increase Fedora's exposure in university environments, particularly in engineering universities. Okay? But unfortunately, I mean, I don't have much info on this. Uh, I think, Ren, you are working with that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there is a ticket in the Fedora Council track, and there's also a wiki page, but I mean, it's not very obvious, it's not very clear. Do we have any progress on that? How is this going? Could you please share some more info, maybe? Sure, so during the council session, there's going to be a two-part session tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. and each of the council members are going to be reporting back on the objectives that are being delivered. Mm -hmm. I'll be giving a quick presentation on what's happening in the Fedora Education and University Initiative there. Mm -hmm. But TLDR, there are a few specific universities that Fedora is working closely with right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. including RIT here in Rochester, which is a big reason why the flock bid came through as well as mm -hmm. it did. Um, and we also have programs and co-op programs that we've done along with some of the code and a few other initiatives. So really, I mean, this is something that is going to ramp up as we get into the school year. The first install fest that we have planned are going to be around Software Freedom Day, and we've already got at least two schools that are signed on, and hopefully we'll get a few more before September. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more to come, and I don't want to take up the whole time on the talk, so should keep going. It's okay. I mean, I'm almost ending. We are uh, almost at 30 minutes so far. Uh, so that is basically my presentation. Thanks a lot for participating. And now would be the time for discussion. Let's brainstorm. Yes, Let's yes. hear a few ideas. So yep. I have a few comments to make and a few questions also. If you can go back a few of the slides. Which uh, one? Uh, to the students and uh, what was that? Uh, campus ambassador things. Uh, yeah. This uh, one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Just uh, go back to one more. Maybe. Uh, no, no. Uh, go back. Uh, come forward. Come, come forward. forward. Yeah. Yep. Uh, one more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, proposed changes. Proposed changes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so I just wanted to ask you, like, do you remember anything, or do you know the things which uh, went ahead when we talked about campus ambassadors and mm -hmm. how the things happened at that time? So the background history. Ah. So uh, one of the things happened was, uh, like, by the time we started Fedora ambassadorship program, and after a couple of years, like, we started discussing these campus ambassadors, and the uh, I mean, discussion was up, and then we was like, oh, we really we want to do that. And we saw that a few other projects and companies also started their ambassadorship program, and one of them was uh, Sun. And so, uh, I guess uh, I'm, not, I'm a mentor from India, so, uh, and I'm a federal ambassador from 2006 in India, so I'm talking from the India point of view. So, we saw many people coming, mostly students, 99%, coming back to us, writing to Fedora India list, asking, like, oh, we want to become ambassadors. And I saw this campus ambassador page, and it's very nice. We have to contribute to Fedora. By the way, which five star hotel you are taking us to? So that was the line to end with. So that then we figured out like how these guys are coming up, and then figured out like few companies are throwing up a lot of money, mm -hmm. and just calling people like people who have no clue about the project, and just like you can still become an ambassador and go everywhere. And the students were very really, really attracted and interested in it because of the other goodies rather than the project itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where it started uh, dangling and uh, like we, if you see the number of ambassadors, you see like back in 2009, we had like this huge cards going up and then there's a huge drop because then we had a long discussion over the ambassador thing and then we came up with ideas like, okay, these people should do minimal this much of thing and they should understand at least this much of the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and so, and then there are a few countries like in India. If you go to the ambassadorship program, there is a particular message written that we expect students to actually work a part of the project first, Absolutely. and then become yep. an ambassador. Yep. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, but we managed to create a little bit of a bar to mm -hmm. entry bar to enter into ambassador program. But uh, things happened was after that was like uh, the one other project which actually does exactly all these things is uh, Mozilla, the yep. Firefox Student Ambassador yeah. Program. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know how much you saw to the output of it, and because you are already a student, you may have seen it, but uh, they have a huge base, number of ambassadors into the Firefox Student Ambassador Program, and the only thing they can talk about is that Firefox is great. 
because uh, it depends on the region. I mean, it depends on the region. Your, region. In your experience, maybe. I mean, in your experience, yeah, but it's it depends on the region. Yeah, but yeah. with the most of the regions, mm -hmm. uh, there are obviously good students who are doing stuff. Uh, but whenever they become that good, you know, they just elevate themselves to the next level and start contributing to the whole project itself. Uh, but uh, the, one of the major problems came up that we couldn't only focus on only those two or three or four students in any one single region. And but you know, everyone wants to become an ambassador. So that whole thing is uh, at least for India. That's why we said particularly from that region. Uh, it's a horrible mess because for Mozilla in that side, like everyone wants, everyone is almost an ambassador or a reps, but uh, they don't understand the project at all. So that's a, I mean, big question from my point of view is like, I mean, how to handle those things? Like, uh, because you said, let's say uh, the student mentor mentee the relationship. So like we make sure that the mentor, uh, the mentees should reply back, like send an email with all the updates they did once in a week. And then we have at least once sure. a week direct chat with them. Make sure that they come to the all IRC meetings. Make sure they feel part of the community rather than someone who wants to be get into the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I mean, what do you what is your thought about okay. those things? How we want to handle those kind of changes? Perfect. So as I said, there needs to be a mandatory process. Okay. So we can't just let everyone in. We need to to propose a few criteria for students that want to become student ambassadors. Okay. There will be maybe there would be interviews. Yeah, so why didn't you With just the call them ambassadors? I mean, why, I mean, they can just become ambassadors rather than being the student ambassador. We right? don't necessarily need them. It's a bit tough for some young people to become full vet ambassadors. It's not an easy process. But uh, okay. the question is, when we say ambassadors, the word, mm -hmm. we are talking to the people who are representing their brand, right? Mm -hmm. So right. they should be at least some level that they can represent the brand anywhere, say in their college or outside any place. So, I mean, how do you want to make sure that that bar is there? Like, the people who are representing the project should know about the project that much. Okay, so, so that's my question to every one of you. Basically, not for him, but in general. Like, if you this is not, yeah, 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 please continue. If you want to make sure that the students or the people who are calling themselves ambassadors, like, how do you want to propose, a, you know, we want to be sure that these people are at least know what they're talking about. Well, the word ambassador means something different in Fedora than it does for most other places. Like, I'm a academic, right? So I spend a lot of time in the Ivory Tower organizing with students. And when other programs like Adobe, for instance, has campus ambassadors, and what that means is that Adobe will give you a bunch of free stuff to give away to other students for free and to just cheerlead the product. Yeah. It is a product evangelism position, whereas ambassadors in Fedora is not a product-based thing. It's a community-based thing. Yeah, so when we talk to students about ambassador programs, that that term isn't just for Adobe. That's for Microsoft. That's for any other software. Ambassador is a understood and established term. It means product evangelist, possibly paid, and possibly with another position waiting for you when you're done doing it. They're highly coveted because they're on-campus jobs that are very fluffy, and they're easy for students to get extra money and extra perks. And that is part of it, is that when you use the word ambassador, that's what that means on many campuses in the U.S. I'm not sure about other places, but it is. It's, it's that exactly the same thing. So it's exactly the same thing. We should be talking about this as uh, talking about changing the, the name or something that doesn't have Karen's connotations. Perhaps something like community mentor mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. no, I think so, so, something that something that implies uh, mm -hmm. more of what it is than what, than what so people so see. So when mm -hmm. ambassador program, if I remember when it started, it was more of the people who. People who are already doing the same work, what we expect from an ambassador, and we just started like, oh, you can like, you should call yourself now a brand ambassador from Fedora, and you know, you should represent this more in a formal way. Yeah. The problem is Fedora thinks of an ambassador very much the same way the UN does. Right. Whereas, uh, whereas <laughs> students at a university think of an ambassador as the guy that hands out uh, the guy that hands out the free copies of uh, of uh, uh, Adobe Photoshop. Yep. Yep. And so the most of the students who used to come down, like we still get the emails because of the wiki pages, like oh I want to become an campus ambassador. And most of the time, at least in India, I know that it comes up only because they want to write it down in their resume. Mm -hmm. And the persons that they send their resumes also along with the email, and it already contains that they are a Microsoft this ambassador, they are a Firefox OS this ambassador, and this these things also. And I also want to become, by the way, a federal ambassador. So. I mean, we found it. It's it's a 
be difficult thing to maintain as a community, and that's why like we pulled the bar. And thanks to the Amisco at that time, then they also understood that we need to pull up the bar at least few regions, where we had like uh, anywhere else in uh, federal land, it's very easy to become an ambassador, but it's not that easy in India. So when we give them a default target, almost like six months to you know to become part of the community first. And then when you are a part of the community, you will always automatically be recognized as an ambassador anyway. It's just, it's just a click. doesn't matter. So becoming part of that ambassador thing was uh, much more important. So we don't, we don't necessarily want students to think like you can't put this on your resume, right? Like that's the number one reason why a lot of students get involved. Um, and we do have a lot of free software to give away, right? So we, are, we do have a lot of the best parts of why you want to be a student ambassador whether the, the name is a good fit for what we do or not. Um, I think that the, the real issue, a lot of it, is that um, the, the unified messaging, and there are different, different people use software for different reasons. And I, even on the council initiative, focusing on engineering universities is a, is a narrow focus, but we're a Linux sister and we have a lot of devs, but broadening out that base a little bit too is an important way to reach out to universities because the, a lot of the, it's harder to do on a campus, but we've seen a lot of, a lot of new ground to be made with disciplines like design and new media and web development that aren't the hard CS and IT, that when we get folks from those disciplines, particularly game design is another good one, and the places where students are most excited to do this new media development happens on the web and happens in games which are highly written with closed source issues, right? So there's a lot of culture that is not the best fit with where academia is going, where students are applying to these technical programs and figuring out where we can tell that story so that you can say, well, if he, there's a place for gamers in Fedora now and there's a place for designers in Fedora now and there's a place for other new media and new types of disciplines that are related to computing. Um, that is a message that, as a distro, like we haven't spun up yet. Like, yeah, that is a new story that even the universities are still trying to figure out how to spin up too, because it's changed so fast. Yeah, so uh, I mean, that, that is a, that, that can be a really good chance that you can jump on this way. If we target the teacher itself, we can um, make a really good noise. And and that's we a we did it in Hungary. Actually, uh, we have an open source lab at Seget, and uh, we have claimed two professors, mathematician professors, and uh, we inspired them to create a Mispin Fedora base, and there is an unpub unpublished, still underpublished, mathemat mathematician, uh, mathematical spin that actually containing teaching mathematics and programs and stuff and it's quite useful and the uh, students love it. So uh, that's actually a damageful question I wanted to ask, uh, which was why uh, spin? Why, why spin over index? What, uh, because to me that says we're missing an opportunity with the uh, workstation because that, that really is part of its goal. It is to be it is to be a mechanism for getting actual work done. It's not it's not just meant to be a developer workstation, but uh, uh, but all about uh, making sure that whatever it is you want to do, as long as you want to get some actual some, something of actual substance done, workstation should be where you do it. And if we're if we're defaulting to well for education, you need it to be a remix or a respin, well, then something is missing. And, and to me, it, it would be really important to talk about what it is that is missing first, because jumping to a respin is probably a, a very heavy weight uh, effort for what might just be a, uh, which might be something that might be solvable in the workstation. Uh, I want to just add to your point. So yeah, actually maintaining a spin is very difficult. Like creating a spin is easy, but if you have to you know, keep maintaining the spin and make sure that everything is updated when you get a new instruction done and stuff, uh, so it's it's much easier if we can get like right now we have workstation before we had the Fedora DVD installation. You have the standard installation and maybe work on top of it. Like uh, uh, there was a talk in this year's uh, Fatcon Pune. I don't know if anyone actually watched it. It's called uh, Vijra Project. So that's actually a very poor village school uh, where we uh, got five old computers donated and completely running on Fedora. 
The only thing we changed was actually install uh, the local language, and so Chrome was running in Bengali, the mother tongue there. And that school, the whole uh, school student and the teacher, everything got totally changed. They got a total makeover for only one single project. It was huge success because before that, nobody in India at the school level used Linux like that. And uh, just to add a point for Remy, like if you go to any Indian engineering colleges, uh, so 90, uh, almost 90 percent chance you'll find uh, Fedora running on their college apps. So it's, it's, it can be maybe you want to look into that side also because we know that if your engineering colleges are using Linux, that will be either RHEL or Fedora. And in this case, it's mostly Fedora. It's like even before we go and talk to anything. So that might be an entry point to look into. But and not, our just, not just an entry point, but we should probably be talking to them about, uh, about their deployment strategy and strategies and use cases so we can use that to build materials for uh, doing labs and other things in other universities and other locations. Actually, I think the Fedora labs um, work would be the best way to say that this is the engineering spin or setups that we can install by group install about the world engine. If it's uh, easy to make sets of packages that actually provide to you tools that e.g. provides a lot of or whatnot, so yeah. yeah. Maybe just Ansible playbooks, maybe. Or you can, well, well yeah, maybe a lot of just are very far of your installs, too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so, but, uh, and so also, that we already have a custom group set. So I need. Uh, if I need a sets from uh, uh, tools from this group or this group, I why not cannot make by DNF a group that actually can hold my stuff. So from this, 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 and this software, so and I can say, okay, this is my. To me, I would say, yeah, let's just use our default uh, desktop on the workstation. To me, that would be is that would be better uh, that GNOME software contains. Uh, you know, has categories and then we click through. We just say, okay, mathematics category, and here, here is a set of applications for mathematics. <laughs> click, it's installed. Oh, wait, we already have that. Yeah. So again, I ask, why are we talking about remixes when we're paying? If there are individual things that are causing us to hem and haw about this, why don't we fix those things and make sure, and make sure that our, all of our marketing materials show how easy it is to install the mathematics lab or the, uh, or the circuit design uh, tool? Directly from that's perfectly uh, fine. I mean, uh, I mean that's why I mean, that's why there are two options for that. I mean, either we did the remix, or at least we provide some instructions for people to customize their environments. So yeah, and yeah, that would definitely work out. It means also we don't have to maintain separate spins. So yeah, we yep. only one place where the spins were used. Only one place. So places where we do not have good bandwidth. That's the only place. I mean, but that's just one place. But these days, I mean, we can actually fix it up. Like most places, we have bandwidth somewhat. So that was the only place where spins actually helped. I mean, but all other places, like having the standard Fedora and then just <coughs> install the packages we need, was much easier mm -hmm. to maintain. But but even with limited bandwidth, I mean, there are uh, mechanisms we can uh, we can use to show. Yeah, so that was I mean, just we, we can write up uh, documentation on what. Yeah, I'm just saying like, that was the only yeah. thing I saw. Good. Uh, other than that, everything else we can just do with the standard right now workstation. Right. No, I'm not disagreeing with you on this. Uh, in here, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. So I'm, I, I know that one of the other council objectives is modularization and looking at rings and or next step stuff. So does this fit into like the EMBs and stacks paradigm, or is this is that not? A good um, so I think nice. well, figuring uh, doing, doing the actual packaging uh, work to get things into the into like the own software I think is sort of looking at the stacks group. But I think a lot of this is actually already there and maybe it just needs a little, a little layer of polish. Yeah, but uh, I think it would be a good idea to integrate uh, all of the, the stuff that actually DNF can install the, the MDM, but the normal RPMs and the extended ones. And there is also the NPM, so the JavaScript part, and why not? So having I mean, a that yeah. is a very different topic. And I strongly <laughs> recommend <laughs> not having it in Sorry. this <laughs> that, That'll go nowhere fast. You must also say it's probably yeah. a bunch of things, but you used to work for one off of Patrol, so you can say a lot of things on this stuff. So actually in high school, so that's you tell them it's a mechanical keyboard. 
but someone actually has a whole bunch of XOs here, or if you really are interested in potentially being a hand on one. Uh, but in general, what are all of you see ran into trouble along the way, and eventually lose them all that is, you have to consider the entire environment. You can't just build something and hope everyone's going to come to it, because that's how that it just doesn't tend to work. And I think where OPC also run into a lot of trouble is a lot of groups have mandated uh, programs, come a lot of, especially US style schools or larger schools, just have mandated programs, videos, online applications they're trying to access that don't work in plain Fedora, often outright require Windows for reason things like Adobe Shockwave and things like that, which don't have an outright Linux component at all. Uh, you can't necessarily run, run even your own little spin disk at schools, especially in more enterprising networks style things. We have centralized control over the network and they want to have a good idea what's going on on it. And schools with Linux, I actually have the opposite experience. OPC currently is all going to Ubuntu LTS, uh, as best as we can tell publicly, because that is what these school districts are dealing with. They got, they're tired of the Fedora upgrade cycle. It, it makes their software very hard to maintain. So they're just they're tired of having to jump everything up. They just want to be on an LTS build and leave it at that. Uh, the, just briefly in colleges, because I'm way out of college at this point. My experience, yes, the ambassadors from Microsoft things tend to be very well paid. I would think you wouldn't want to necessarily, if there is an open source group or if the school may want to work on that and work with that as opposed to trying to uh, create your own Fedora ambassador separate from it. So I have a comment about the Microsoft specific software. That's the point of having a USB and a lot of USB. They can still use Windows. You're not going to replace Windows yep. in a lot of the school. I don't think that's far. But, but I'm saying the school that's one thing, yeah. may not necessarily yeah. permit it. Yeah. Plugging in a USB in many schools and colleges is not allowed. Okay. That's right. Oh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> The cool that is not in the lab, but he was talking about laptops. Yeah. Well, if you're doing that on your own PC, maybe uh, provided you can get on the network with it. It's to be, in general, your, but if it's like school property, they may have mandated, you can only run this. You can run the video on the laptop. Well, change the and, and, you know, certainly those, what did the school can target first? I mean, <laughs> then right. what we need to do is we need to find the, we need to find the friendly location that we need to use them to prove out that this is a net benefit to their uh, to their students. That, they, that the students that come out of the, that come out of school with this experience succeed mm -hmm. uh, compared to their peers. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that happens. And once we can and once we can demonstrate that that is the case, then we start having being able to make inroads into those places that are rigid. so that are, that are so Microsoft centric that. Uh, Basically, basically you're, what you're trying to find is the Greenfield schools, which aren't already entrenched. The thing is, a lot of no, schools. No, we're, we're, no we're, trying to find the, we're trying to find the schools that are amenable to, uh, to alternatives. Not the, right. and, and, and the schools that are just outright hostile are not the right place to start. They're, yep. they're the ones that can be. They're the ones that will only ever be con convinced by other by other groups' successes. Right. Well, it, it's good if you just basically you're going to find the schools that are interested in potential alternatives to a lot of schools in general. They see first world Microsoft, whatever. That's what they want because they don't. They don't want you to rip something like Sugar Custom sweet into them. They want the act of what everyone else has. Well, see, and five years ago, I would absolutely agree with that. But given that the world at this point is moving very heavily towards a, a, a very a strongly Linux-based cloud environment, and a lot of the, uh, the the jobs out of college now are going by going that direction. And then even Microsoft is starting to play catch up. They're, they're terrified and they keep revamping their uh, Azure strategy on yeah, a no, basis. I think that there's not, I think that, that this is kind of a, uh, an opportunity point where we have, we have the ability to say, hey, develop on the deployment, uh, develop on your deployment target. Mm -hmm. we have, a, we have, a, we have a, a moment in history where we actually might be able to strike that balance and get in while, the, while that major paradigm shift is happening. And I think we need to do that. The, the important thing I think that like we are used to and Fedora, Fedora moving into a, the additions, right? We're trying to differentiate different ways that people can use Fedora for different reasons and then having release cycles that reflect that. That is sort of the way that we need to think about schools too because though a lot of schools in the US are similar, all of them have very different political realities. 
and some schools are very much open to experimentation and innovation, and some of them just will not have it. Um, I've even seen schools that are amenable to it have one C-level executive change, and then the entire policy changes underneath them. Where my students used to have root on our hardware, and that's not allowed anymore. And I've been told that that's a university-level policy. And I've been told that students aren't allowed to run their own web servers on their own hardware anymore on the campus network, which was not the case even three years ago. So things can change really fast, and they are very different between schools. So even if we come up with unified tool sets and unified strategies, those are going to work differently depending on which environment you are in, and you will always need a local person on the ground to help navigate it. At least one faculty member, hopefully tenured, who has the ability to be able to withstand the political pressure and move things forward. And there are different ways externally that you can go and internally. I mean, I could do a whole Adventures in Academia session alone in doing outreach on campuses, and that is not, no time for that right now, but I really need all of your help. Right? This is one of the most well-attended sessions that I've seen, and if, if I'm supposed to be leading the council on this education objective, like all of the ideas that we're talking about in here are really important. All of your experiences that you've had are really important, particularly with Sugar Labs and Little PC. I think that that strategy is huge. That represents three million Fedora users across the world, roughly, depending on how you do the math. Um, these are really important things, and the stuff that we're doing here, like, we need to find a common place to meet on this stuff. I don't know if Fedora has an EDU SIG, or the council has a, a meeting where people do student ambassadors, campus representative, or whatever we're gonna call it things, but establishing some kind of regular EDU powwow is probably a good idea, because if 12 to 18 months isn't gonna be enough time to transform all of the universities, Maybe we can add one or two here or there this year, but if we want this to be an ongoing initiative in Fedora, which it looks like a lot of you do, then we're gonna need all the help we can get. So please, check into the council wiki and, and contribute this time. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to kind of add in my perspective. Mm -hmm. so I, was, I, I only just graduated high school, but I've been looking at the Fedora ambassador program for a while, but I guess 16, 17, I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I saw the student ambassador program, but it's a very high barrier to entry. And I mean, I'm not really much of a programmer, and I'm, I'm going into system administration, but um, I didn't really have like really integral knowledge of the inner workings of the computer, but I was really a big fan of the whole platform of Fedora and the community, the freedom and open source software. And that was kind of what pulled me in. And I really wanted to get involved in some kind of way, but I was kind of stuck. And I was trying to figure out, like, well, I want to do something for Fedora, but I don't know really know how. And I kind of felt like, oh, I don't really know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not bad. Have to be a full ambassador to that. Well, yeah, I mean, that's something actually yeah, so happened. Yeah, so what was the point where you got stuck? I mean, what made you confused? I just felt like I couldn't really offer anything, like, meaningful to the the project. And yeah. I mean, I was always every everything contribution, every contribution is meaningful. I mean, yeah. I mean, and I mean, I've, I've always been an advocate for Fedora. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, perfect. I've gotten people to install it, and I've always spoken. Like I, I've, I've talked about it, and I've always um, kind of propelled it on other people. But I mean, not just I mean, I, I explain it and try to give an accurate understanding of mm -hmm. what exactly freedom is and software. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not much of a, I'm not much of a developer, but I'm really in that community side of stuff. And I don't know, I, I always wanted to get involved with the program, but I see the best way for me to enter into like an official kind of standpoint and to, or how to have some kind of guidance and really make an impact. And I, that's why I, I really am a big fan of the student mm -hmm. ambassador program kind of making her come back. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, before like the full ambassador, because I mean, that was something I was looking for an entry way to kind of yep. contribute and um, good, good point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's something that I, I, I would definitely love to get involved. So I need to have like a mentor, but then kind of have a student, student ambassadorship. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the student ambassadors program would, 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 would work for you that way. So basically, you just need an entry point to keep progressing inside the community and to explore new opportunities. So, yeah, from what you're saying, I mean, it would work, this kind of structure, it would work out for you. So, yep. So, 
Do you know if we, we as in Fedora or Red Hat here in US, do we have any kind of uh, work towards the policy or lobbying towards the policy for the school boards or the things where the syllabus is much more open source friendly? No, I don't think Red Hat has a political strategy for school board elections. That would be a really interesting way of going about it. School board electioneering. I'm not talking about elections. I'm talking about the thing. Why I'm telling that? Because uh, uh, in India, the largest school board is called CBSC. So I know that there are many people from Red Hat are also very much involved with the uh, whatever the people who take decisions in the country. And so in 2009, I think, or 11, they decided, and 2013, the full syllabus got rewritten. So instead of having only Microsoft specific tools, now in India we have the syllabus is neutral. So it says either we can use Visual uh, what you call Studio or use GCC and use MySQL to learn a database. Uh, Python instead of even C++, you can use Python as a programming language, and operating system is also your choice. Yeah. So, so real quick, really, really. Quick. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What I was going to say is, in the U.S., almost all uh, school boards are local decision making, not uh, not, not uh, national. Although there's uh, there there are certain amounts of national uh, lawmaking involved here, uh, and I do know that actually uh, Red Hat does have a lobbyist uh, working towards uh, towards adjusting some of those uh, the, those uh, laws. But frankly, uh, every teacher I've ever met. Basically, hates all of them. Have been in, all those uh, national laws that have been so far. So there's, there's a much stronger pull to remove to remove them entirely as opposed to fixing them. So there's not a great deal of uh, uh, benefit for us, okay. at least in the U.S., to push in that political. So I will modify my previous answer too and say, not that I know of. I'm still pretty new <laughs> here. Um, there is a new organization called Code.org mm -hmm. who is working really hard in the U.S. to get CS to count as a mathematics requirement. So there are, there is a national organization that is getting some traction that I know that companies like Red Hat also support. So though we're not necessarily taking, like we're, the global public policy team, as far as I can tell, is always paying attention to all of the stuff that they can find. Um, but the, the real, it isn't necessarily as much policy on the curriculum side. Red Hat just established an educational outreach team within OSAS. So Spot and Jenna and Nick Yates are members of this team. And they are compiling lists of Fedora-friendly and FOSS-friendly universities, coming up with lists of targets. They are doing training sessions with professors, doing posse. So there's a lot of uh, curriculum development and module development that is coming out of this new Red Hat education outreach team. And they are very accessible. So I would say they would probably know best, for sure. Um, Spot and Jenna Likens and Nick Yates. Those are the three folks that are that we're doing this stuff. So if you That's want to ask them. Pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a good stuff. And to branch up a little more, I remember saying earlier about how now Fedora has become a good opportunity for developers, for gamers, and also and what, what if we could find other ways to branch out farther to figure out how we could solve maybe like business things for the large community. Maybe there's something we can do that isn't just go to this, this program that we can expand Maybe have something that's more kind of like a plain language converter approach. I don't know, I'm looking at the URL stuff right now from the training and just kind of like other ways to branch out and expand to different kinds of maybe get just more users of Fedora, not necessarily contributors. We are like way over time, so if you've got a closing message, you should probably do that. <laughs> well, we should definitely look into that. That's all I want to say. So, I mean, we should stay connected because I guess most of you are definitely interested in that topic on how we can improve our visibility in schools. So, with the Guinness Involvement Initiative, I think we can definitely join and plan something together, plan something better and bigger. So, we just need someone to step in and say, hey, let's do that. So, we need leaders for that. <laughs> we need people who are going to step in. Don't lose track of the gap between the preschool and the post-secondary. Like a lot of the discussions were really good, but I believe that's a very integral part. That if you're able to get much more interest at that stage, a lot of this will become a lot easier. Uh, so that was just kind of important. Which stage you mean? Uh, so high school, uh -huh. yeah. middle school, yep. so, yeah, between post-secondary and uh, post-secondary. I see. Yeah.
it's easier to do that in secondary schools. I mean, fr from secondary and, on and onwards. So yeah. That that is true. But um, from my experience as well, I've mm -hmm. always known about Linux and stuff, right? But it was only like post secondary that opened the doors, and then later pursued more and mm -hmm. started understanding more. In high school, there was Linux was this <laughs> like kind of coveted thing that you'd want to get into, but a little bit harder. But that was a while ago. It probably changed over the years. So. Okay, guys, that's all. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks a lot. And I look forward into having more discussions and to plan more stuff. Thank you very much. Maybe you can just, uh, you know, just drop a uh, mail. Definitely. Like yep, yep, start, yep. De yeah. Definitely. So definitely. We'll do. We'll do. Thank you. Okay, that's up. Yep.